I think name, you're good. Name there. the best five rappers of all time. Dylon, Dylon, <laughs> Dylon, Dylon, Dylon. I spit hot fire. And right, the Island Boys. The, <laughs> <laughs> the Island Boys. Dude, is that what people are dressing like now? I don't know. He was in a pool. I wasn't looking at his clothes or his body. I was looking at that monstrous dome piece where the he had like dreadlocks that looked like Dragon Ball Z coming out of his head and or something. Stupid tattoos. Face tattoos. I think they were homemade. It's kind of like the the Chicago Bulls tattoos <laughs> I was telling you about the other day. Wow. Uh, 1993 world champions. I saw a guy uh, when my wife and I were on our honeymoon. Yeah. I gotta get comfy. I love that you just bunny hop that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> like a third grader. Like a scooter. Scoot. <laughs> it's my razor. Um, we were walking down the beach in Aruba, and this guy is walking up to us. And on his right arm, in like full Simpsons graphic, like like cartoony Simpsons coloring with rainbow, I said spring break. 93. I was just like, ouch. And this was like 2008. Like 2009, yeah. <laughs> 12, whatever. And it was like, oof. Like, dude. <laughs> I wonder if they took him in there incapacitated. Maybe. Possibly. 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 Welcome Let's back. This. Welcome back to the Hanging Hunt podcast. We're going to get this started off correctly. It, this is two podcasts in a row that I've called it the proper name. I'm excited about that. Yeah, I mean, Normally we have about I, seven know, that are called the Hunt Urban podcast. There but, are about know. seven that I might have slurred out. The wrong we were just name. talking to someone today who wants to change the name of our podcast to their company name. Yeah, Playtex. <laughs> Brought to you by Bob's Pleasure Toys. <laughs> no, I actually, I wanted to tell you about that. I found one that really, they did contact me. They're called Buck Gummy Edibles. They told me to say this, cannabis infused deer bait. Get them high, watch them die, bruh. But they're not for human consumption. Uh, we're interested. <laughs> <laughs> for the deer, not for us. <laughs> <laughs> no, they'll just be wandering around the woods, like sitting in the sunshine, so you know right where to hunt. With a bandana. Yeah, right. Peace, man. Yeah. <laughs> bait would really work, man. Why can't we be friends? <laughs> yeah. I don't know what's going on in the woods, but these Cheeto bags are just <laughs> getting devoured. <laughs> uh. Uh, so we just got back from, if it wasn't the most fun hunt I've ever been on, I don't know what is. Well, there weren't any illegal substances involved. None. Um, just only a little bit of brown. Uh, one bottle. One bottle. It was a big bottle, but only one. For the whole, like, five, six days. It was funny when one of the camera guys was laughing when we were at the liquor store on the first night. He was like, whoa, was that just for tonight? And then, it, Yeah. Yeah. It was. Well, yeah. <laughs> it's not for the whole week. We can always come back tomorrow. And that poor camera guy did try to keep up with us. That night. And I love your pouring technique because I caught you in it three or four or seven times. Did not You're mean like, to. I will. Oh, yeah, I didn't mean to. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Let me get you a drink. If Taylor says, I'll get you a drink, yours is a double, triple, or quadruple, and his is a, there was, is a halfie. There was one point where he we were talking about something. <laughs> Right, and you're and you're I saying, started say when. pouring. I said, I said, I said, get while it's hot. Say when, and then I looked at you, and you were talking to me about something, and I completely forgot that I was pouring a beverage. And he was like, when, when <laughs> he was yelling. When? When. I looked back, it was like, whoops, <laughs> <laughs> a little splash of ginger. There was a lot of brown water in his cup, and that probably contributed to why he did not want to get out of bed the next morning. <laughs> Dude, the next morning. He was the last person, and he was a trooper, though. He, when he woke up, he got up, and you could see it, both of his eyes were looking at each other. That was the first problem. He, and, and they weren't the night before. I don't and know why everything's so blurry. His stomach was doing one of those. You ever seen those people who've got really nice abs and they can wave their stomachs? His entire upper torso was doing that and trying not to projectile vomit out of his mouth. He tried so hard to pretend like he was okay. I'm just... <laughs> like, stop coughing on the stamp. <laughs> you are hunting from the ground today. <laughs> <laughs> and every time he smells that marsh, oh, that... Oh, that bomb. methane wafting up into your God. nostrils. I 
I know he felt bad because I felt awful. And if I feel bad, yeah, it's not good. Well, I was up in the tree thinking, I don't feel too bad. And then about 10 o'clock <laughs> rolled around and the sun hit me in the face and I went, I feel pretty bad. I think we had about a four hour nap after we, we uh, as soon as I got back to camp, I was like, all right. Well. We crushed <clears> some food. <throat> yep. And a nap. then it was nap time. Did we go to the diner that morning? Was that the morning? No. I don't think, I don't think we were able to. No, we went to Walmart that first, that was the first morning. We went to Walmart and everyone's so in camp. It's a brand new camp. And we didn't have a designated place to do your business. So we had to kind of either hold it or figure it out. And most people held it until we got to Walmart. Oh my gosh, every <laughs> bathroom in Walmart was occupied for a good 30 to 45 minutes it was um it was an experience i just went in the woods which at first you know i have no problem going in the woods uh, yeah i mean we well all, we all know that anywhere in public yeah it, just in my pants in general can, can i ask you by the way when mm -hmm. you took the when we left and you walked out of the house with wet wipes and your wife said absolutely not no you are not taking those are for the baby go get the other wet wipes the ones that you are assigned to not the baby's wet wipes i peed myself <laughs> but those did save multiple people in the woods they're flushable wet wipes yes i haven't used toilet paper since i've known my wife when we first started well maybe like a couple weeks when we first started living together I realized that she had wet wipes in her bathroom, and I was like, what are these? And I tried one, and I was like, wow. Glory. Wow. <laughs> there's there's no turning back once you go down the wet rabbit hole. <laughs> it's a level of clean that you've just never experienced. No, it's, it's like a little bidet. You know, and the best part about them at, at hunting camp is that you're not showering very often. So you can, if ever, if, if the entire time <laughs> I did sit out in that rainstorm and got soaking effing wet and I had rain gear with me and I remember thinking, why in the <laughs> world would I give up an opportunity to get some water on me to wash me off? And How then, cold was that? By the way, it was pretty chilly out. I don't know. It was probably like, what was it? Like 65 or something. I don't God, know. I felt like it was like 50 in that but the wind. wind. The wind was howling, but yeah. I honestly, I was a little chilly, but. You know, as you can see in some of the pictures, I was definitely smuggling peas. <laughs> like, the high beams were on the whole time. Cute. You you brought, <clears throat> well, first off, so we were on the eastern shore of Maryland hunting sea deer. Mm -hmm. It's mid-October. It's the roar. Mm -hmm. They're in rut. See, why do they call them stags and hinds here? And that's a European thing, but they don't call it the roar here also. It's the, the rut. Don't they call right? it the roar? I don't. I do. You're a chicken necker, though. <laughs> Window licker. Uh, yeah, so they were roaring. Rawr. Loving. Rawr, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Katy Perry. Shout out Katy Perry. Um, it was awesome, but we were at, at your family place, which is super cool, and you guys just built camp there. It's a new property. You just got it last December. <clears throat> it is really an awesome experience. It was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. The, the people in camp made it too. Yeah, could, you know. we had the tethered crew in, in town. Um, I guess of which we are part of the tethered mm -hmm. crew. So like other guys came into town, we hung out, whatever. Um, but yeah, so swampy area plus pull your pants down to poop in the woods <laughs> equals three thousand mosquitoes on every piece of virgin pasty thigh that you've ever heard. Every part of your body. So I had a dermatology covered. appointment yesterday. There Yesterday, <laughs> sir, you and Doctor Huynh is pretty cool. She's awesome. She's she's very thorough, and she looked at me and was like, "Hmm, what have you been doing in the outdoors lately? So often, you know, why have you been in the outdoors so often? Because I see you have a thousand mosquito bites all over your body." I was like, "Yeah, I've been hooking down in Southeast right. DC with my." She's like, "You even have one your." No, I I had a ton on my my back where they back. Like eaten through the, uh, or I get I mean they bite through the merino, but it was they were disgusting. Yeah. I came home and my wife's just pointing and laughing at me, which is normal when I'm getting in the shower, but it was like extra pointing and laughing. Yeah. And when you turned away, she still pointed and yeah. laughed. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Yeah, no, they, but they didn't like crush me. Like I haven't been itching for like three days, so I'm good. I'm good now. I've been good uh, or better. 
it, you, you know that it's uh, political voting season when you're getting oh, text messages up. from. I don't even care who it's from. I already know who I'm voting for. Yeah. I'm done. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Don't talk to me. I, th- I thought I had my phone on silent, though. I did. So, anyways, awesome time. I think it was, for me, it was a lot of fun to show those guys the Eastern Shore. So, like, first night we get there, got out. And the cool thing about your property is it's so diverse. It feels like multiple different properties in one property. Like, there's marsh, there's swamp, there's oak, you know, flats and like little fingers of hardwoods that go into pines, young pines, old pines. Uh, you really get like the everything there. And it's just, it's not a big property, but it, it, it hunts big. Yeah. You know, we had nine we, guys, nine in camp. guys in camp. Four hunters. Yeah. And Four we were hunters. nowhere close to like tripping all over. Five hunters. Other. Yeah. Your dad. Yeah. Too, yeah. Five, five hunters in total. And, and no, we weren't at all. Now, Greg does say that maybe we were encroaching on a spot, but he invited us. Yeah, he's like, yeah, I mean, he had stags running around everywhere across the marsh. And if you can see 800 yards, that's not your spot. <laughs> it's like that whole golf I've course got, is my I've, spot. I've got the half of this county. Yeah. Right? No, but there were tons of people down there on public land, too. That was eye-opening. And the muzzleloading season uh, just kicked off today over there. And I was talking to the old man, and he said that there are vehicles with kayaks, bikes, e-bikes um boats with those uh with those mud motors on them like the one we used with uh yeah, with Ford. Ford. <clears throat> and he said they're everywhere like going across the bridge and i mean they were it's crushing over there Dude, right now i cannot imagine being on one of those e-bikes in that country because it goes from hard fast ground mm-hmm. to soupy mud immediately immediately and you can't see it and you just go in wide open throttle, <laughs> and now where's my bike? Because I'm flying through the air. <laughs> because it, I just left my bike. Yeah, and unintentionally. <laughs> I mean, like on that road, the like there's a couple of roads that are trails that are hard packed that you could. That's three quarters of a mile. We're not used to walking that far. Yeah, I mean, forty yards tops round trip to and from my truck, and that's a that, that's a mouth drape. breathing exercise <laughs> right there. Aren't we all? <laughs> but yeah, yeah it, it was a good time, and so. Um, I don't know. I enjoyed showing those guys that country. It's cool hunting sea deer because a lot of those spots uh, outside of being on the marsh, you really can't see far. Yeah. And if if we were hunting whitetail, and I'd been in some of those spots where there wasn't like a ton of sign that I could see and can't see really many animals, I might have been kind of discouraged by like the second third hunt. But the fact that you're hearing them bugle everywhere, you're like, we're in them. They're mm-hmm. here. And close. And, and they sound a lot closer than they really are. But when they're screaming and it makes you jump. Yeah, you're like, that's, that one's there. Right there. Yeah. They're close. They're close. And, you know, Jared, he was in a spot that was a fantastic spot. I mean, just he was covered in sign. And he really didn't see very much because his far the shot would have, maybe it would have been 25 yards. Yeah. So... Yeah, I, I hear you, and and it's you're trying to play on their natural movements, but at the same time, every single person around there, you know, baits with alfalfa and and corn, and and you know, there's there's so much pressure. The natural their natural movements end up becoming part of those other pieces people's properties and where they're baiting and where you are, and and it becomes a little chess match with your neighbors too. Oh, for sure. Just to keep them on your property, and we weren't hearing them scream very much on our property proper, like right in the heart of our property where we've been getting all the cameras and everything. And so we were hunting on the outskirts and then my dad said, well, he's going to go in. He went dead center of the property to see. And one of the biggest stags came in to him. He wasn't able to get a shot, but they were there just not screaming. So imagine the number of bugles that we heard every single day. But then there were some stags that never bugled, like Jared's never bugled. Right. And, and so... I think that was our, if we had a time capsule and got to do it all over again, I think abandoning the intel, well, I mean, maybe that's not the right way to say it, but like going just where we saw them as opposed to like where we knew others had been on the food and all the prep work you guys had put in, that would be what I would change probably. Most likely. And I'm, I, you know, I, I don't have any regrets about where I hunted. I think I was in a great spot. Every spot I hunted was a great spot. No problem. 
but I do think that we kind of were like, oh, well, we're seeing him in the marsh. We moved to him. Right. You know, and, and that is. And that we is could an, see him, but we were, an, yeah. we were like watching him. And, and, you know, for just as well as we saw him at 500 yards, we could have had one of those hinds come running over. Very easily. And gotten cracked. One of the, you know, stags with her get cracked no problem mm-hmm. like that could have happened in a heartbeat it there didn't... were definitely points that they were within 100 yards of us mm-hmm. you know and off obviously out of bow range but off property but i mean in general i think the uh you guys being able to experience a new type of animal a new type of deer it's a different type of hunting completely different landscape and sharing it with a bunch of people everybody at camp was really cool we had a good time we Ate pretty well. We did eat some sick of heart. That was pretty. I I never eaten it. I've never had sick of heart. That was delicious. It was backstraps. It was yeah. backstrap strips. Yeah. I mean, that's really what it was like. It was awesome. I'm I'm definitely not leaving heart in the woods. Have you ever had whitetail heart? Yeah. Yeah. You know, for me, whitetail heart's okay. I feel like it's a little chewy. And how maybe... did you, How did you like the uh, the sick of deer, the steaks that I sent you? The little itty bitty like cutlets. Oh, they're phenomenal. They were fire. Absolutely. Sick of deer meat is my favorite game meat. Yeah, mine too. Mine too. Hands down. I, I've had some, uh, when I was in Texas last, I had some um, cow elk fajitas that, that uh, Colton Moore cooked up, who's like awesome chef. Mm-hmm. Uh, he'll be the first to tell you that like he wanted to be a chef. He didn't want to get into guiding. He like, loves a hunt, loves cook. And so... I have just as much fun eating what Colton cooks in camp. Oh, uh, sure. Yeah, because I'm fat. Did you <clears throat> eat Axis down there? Yeah. F- fire. Absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. It's so good. We had He does, um, actually, Colton. Colton's a great dude. I don't think you've met Colton yet. Mm, no, not yet. He's, like, very dry. Like mm-hmm. He's a Texas badass, right? And uh, we're, like, cutting into this Axis steak that's bacon-wrapped, and I'm like, Oh man, this is so good. I'm like, like, oh, I made some comment about it being tenderloin or backstrap. He was like, buddy, that's uh that's hind quarter. I was like, what? He's like, that's a hind quarter steak. And I'm like, oh my god, like hind quarter is this tender and delicious that I don't even want to hunt anything else other than yeah. like, go shoot a couple does. I, I hear you. I mean, because usually, typically, you're gonna, I mean, backstraps. Those are the ones that are the most, you know, I guess tender at least. I mean, mm-hmm. there are more flavorful pieces on any animal. I've really gotten into neck roasts and not grinding the front shoulders. Yeah. Just roasting the front shoulders. And they're unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Josh is shoot, eating a lot of uh, shanks now. Slow cooks and like braises and cold smokes and a million different things that he does. He's, he's better at that than I am. But he, uh, he raves about the shanks. And I haven't eaten them yet. I think I'm going to try that. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like we just have so much whitetail meat that we're kind of like gluttonous about it. A bit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when... The necros when, are great. When you have people who say, you can have the back straps, I'll just take the rest of the deer. I say, okay. Yeah, deal. Take sure. It. I'll just you know, take back straps. I've, I've been avoiding eating, cooking cutting into any bone material just in general with the I, cwd um, i don't do it at all that's why you know i'm not going to get an animal butchered probably at all because they use that bandsaw and cut right. through the bone and i just and i know it's I all in the spinal de-bone column it. but at the same so, time like i don't want to take that risk you can't tell me that's not in the lymphatic system right it has to be i would think so because your you lymph nodes are basically trying to extract anything that's bad it's they're there. I'm not a doctor, but I did go to medical school. <laughs> I was out back trying to rob some of the doctors. I was. I tried to get my gynecology degree. <laughs> Just leave that right there. <laughs> Let's. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I I try to avoid the bones. So like, <clears throat> I'm not gonna <laughs> shout out Nick Gates. <laughs> but I've been trying to. Uh, I, I like the neck roast. I'll I'll take it off as like a flank steak and then yeah. roll it up and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. But yeah, I'm not trying to let the bone in. No, out, and 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 I I used to like to actually cook with the bone. Yeah, but now I'm like, like man, broth or something. I don't want to. I don't want to mess with that. I totally agree. My um, some of my guys that I used to give deer to, they would make bone broth. Oh yeah, and and that I mean they thought that was like the cure all for everything. They will cook that for two or three days. Yeah, 
multiple days to really and when you take the bone out it's like just i mean it's like gelatin yeah it's, but there's I, nothing left I, I just don't i don't want to mess with that with cwd around we have a lot of cwd here <clears throat> well it's come it's we're just figuring out um, that we have it but i would i would venture to guess that we have way denser populations of cwd than we even think that we have well, sure it's going to spread just rapidly when yeah. you have that many deer in the same in the same area yeah, it just has to right absolutely and so whatever um whatever <laughs> whatever <laughs> god valley girls i don't know but look it's it's been a really cool week i mean we went from we were shooting whitetails a couple days before uh, we went on that sick of hunt, and then that was a that was a pretty good trip. My wife and your wife don't think it was a good trip, but it was a great trip in general. It was, we I, we might be blast. roommates. <laughs> could be, could be buying that new hunting property and going. I wish my kids still loved me, but they haven't seen me in a year. <laughs> they call that new guy daddy. <laughs> uh, you know, interestingly enough, <clears throat> after this trip, I have I have changed like. Four pieces of gear. Shocker. Dude, we were, last week, last week, you were like, ah, I went back. I went back to the site. I went back to my garment. I'm, I'm, I'm off it. So sitting in those, sitting in those pockets of woods, I was uncomfortable with not having a fixed pin on my site. But you'd love to be able to switch to slider or something quickly and easily yeah yeah that's why i put sliders back on all my bows yeah that's got to be fun i mean luckily i'm sure you didn't move them no they're they're but they're dead on i mean put it right back on but still you still have to check yeah well then i had to go shoot a bunch of bows yesterday and today (laughs) but yeah i mean i just i don't know and the other thing that was kind of like bothersome to me and i know that it's accurate but on that Garmin, like seven yards shows up, like wham, like way high. You were talking about in the this. site housing, and I've actually shot a couple deer and not been able to hold that pin on target because I was so concerned with it not being correct. One of the things I think would contribute to that is the housing of the site blocks out a lot of your site <laughs> picture on a typical. Uh, typical site housing, it's a circle and it's pretty thin. Mm-hmm. We're talking about a quarter inch. And the only thing that will really block your view is what's against the riser. Yeah. So that has a little bit, it's much bigger housing, so you can't see. So I, I imagine when you're trying to put a pin on a deer, you want to see the whole body. Well, and what's funny is, like, I know that the pin's correct, right? Mm-hmm. Because it's at seven yards... The difference between let's let's just make up like your twenty yard pin is where it normally is, and let's say that your seven yard pin comes in halfway between the top your twenty yard pin and the top of the house, mm-hmm. and it looks like you know astronomical amounts. But if you hold on like a door handle, or I was doing this in the woods where I was looking at a tree that was seven yards away and seeing it's only like that high, mm-hmm. right? It, it was one piece of bark. I was staring at a pine tree. I was measuring. I'm like. Wow, that's only like two inches, but that's six. Well, that, that's twelve. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, and it's showing me correctly where the arrow hits. I know my arrow hits a couple inches high at seven yards mm-hmm. instead of twenty. But in my head, I can't get over that. Right? I'm looking at. It, I'm like, I'm gonna shoot over this thing, or shoot under it, or whatever. Shoot under, yeah. Um, so that was kind of bothersome. And then, like, watching the footage of the of the stag that you shot. Like, dude, you would not have been able to range. You would have had to range the ground in front of him because you had some brush. It would have, been, and actually, it would have been a false reading because I would have ranged past him. the The ground behind him it was a small, you know, plate size hole. Mm-hmm. I would have ranged right through that hole on a line to the ground past him. It may have been five or six yards behind him, and, and he came into that, and I just saw his vitals. Yeah. I was always worried about getting an inaccurate reading on the Garmin. Um, and something that actually put my mind at ease for that is it doesn't just send out like laser beam, get a reading back. It, it sends out a code. So it'll be like dash, you know, dot, dot, dash, whatever the, the breakup is. And if it gets it back out of sync, it's able to 
to calculate what the actual yardage is, not brush in the middle of it, which is kind of cool. But yeah, at the same time, like there's a high probability of getting the the ground behind the animal, mm-hmm. past the animal, um, and just the shot timing. Like we talked in our last podcast about like timing of everything. And when when everyone sees the video, they're gonna see there was a you can hear me, meh, 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 and then it's it's gone. Yeah. There was no time. He was moving. I mean, he was really going. So I I don't think I would have my sequence would have been messed up also. Yeah, I <clears throat> so like thinking about that, I also took my <coughs> excuse me, got the rona. Um I took my bino chest rig off. Yeah, so I wanted to throw that track. in the swamp at the end of that. Um, Were was it from drawing or just so at generally? Our, in a, a hunt a couple weeks ago, I had watched the footage and seen that my bowstring had been like coming in contact with the rig and i was like that's awful like i can't believe i didn't notice that so i lowered it way down but then it was like kind of in the way of my bridge it gets right in between your bridge and then if you lean forward it gets caught under the bridge and you try to lift up and it gets stuck under and i could yeah yeah. it's easier to take that rig off than to lose my gut so Mm -hmm. (laughs) um but yeah, so this is one exercise <laughs> pulling the, pulling this cap off. I don't want to do a hundred exactly, but I don't know. I think like I really like just being able to pick the bios up and throw my eyes. Me too. The only thing I don't like about the um, the binos is they're unprotected. Yeah, you're coming up. You came up with a pretty good solution for that. I mean, yeah. you were kind of playing around, showing me with your little prototypes and what you were thinking about doing, and yeah. I thought it was fire because it's zero bulk, zippy bulk. And you get protection. Yeah. I mean, not fall on my big fat belly protection. Well, but... my belly is protecting it. Oh, yeah. It's just... <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Where'd the binos go? It's like Slimer on uh, Ghostbusters. <laughs> it just goes inside. <laughs> uh, Good thing I have my lens cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I don't know. I, I'll see how that, how that pans out, but... Um... Yeah, and then you used a gigantic expandable broadhead. <laughs> the biggest one I could find. Well, probably not the biggest, but I I uh I wanted to put a big hole quick because it's very it's, similar to hunting in the burbs. Yeah, it's difficult to find them. And I mean look, I think any good broadhead will work down there, but it sometimes it's tricky to track them because of their their coat. They have like this double coat. Remember when we picked that one stag up and we were looking under him it's almost like wool under their hair Mm -hmm. so it really soaks that uh soaks the blood up and they're running through water yeah so when that splashes all over your blood trail it doesn't help so right not uh, only they're running through water all the pine needles and stuff yeah they're difficult to track very difficult to track and a lot of that that like grass the frag like everything is very has red on it when it's changing yeah it's just yeah it's just a just a bunch of factors that come together to make it difficult. So, yeah, yeah I was shooting a – I don't even – I really don't know what it is. It's a, I think it's a nap, like a double cross or something like that. It has four, four expandable. Four expandable blades. One of them – or two fold back and the others are rear deploying. It's called and, the air brake. <laughs> yeah. And it, it put a hole in that poor deer. The size of your head. It was gigantic. Yeah. Absolutely gigantic. I surprisingly didn't get a full pass through, even though I mean, it hit that opposite shoulder, but shocker. I mean, that's a lot of drag. Yeah. It's yeah. just slight, slight uh, <laughs> loss in, in, in momentum and kinetic yeah, energy. And there. I just don't see the need for that. I mean, you, you shoot a four blade fixed head, you know, like, I don't know, there's so many out there, but like a Grizz trick. Yeah. I mean, a Grizz trick puts that same hole, maybe bigger. But you're getting a pass through. It's a square. Yeah, it's it's, it's like awesome. throwing a tobacco steak through it here, <laughs> not a hatchet. Yeah, though I, I've been bouncing between those and the the day six heads. Day six heads, I like that the one that's a little wider. Yeah, the bleeders are bigger than other broadheads that are very similar, like you know Iron Wheels, for example. Mm-hmm. The bleeders are a little bit bigger. I like the size of that. I mean. Jared shot his with a day six head, but the he smaller shot the one. Small one. And he, he, sh- I, he didn't even have the three quarter inch bleeder on there. No, he had the short bleeder and his deer went seventy yards. Yeah. I've been I've been using the I've been using both the they have an inch and a quarter, the smaller one, which is what Jared shot mm-hmm. his with, but with the three quarter inch bleeder, which is pretty sweet. Um 
that's a, you know a little under two yep. inches there. And then I've also been using the big Mamma Jamma, which is the inch and a quarter mm-hmm. pl- plus the three quarter inch. That's a two inch cutting diameter that would shoot through a cinder block wall. Hundred percent. Um, love that. You know? Yeah, and, and the I found penetration that, you, you're getting two holes with that absolutely. with our setups. You know, yeah. pushing six hundred grains, and you know, and I've been using a four Fletch on those that works really well. You've been running those uh, taller veins than mm-hmm. I'm running. Yeah, but um, I really liked those. You know what was funny for me? The hunt this past weekend was the first time that I can remember in a long time of hunting with rubber boots on, and I was like, "Oh, I yeah." Hiking in a rubber boot after you've gotten used to like a actual hiking like crispy boot. fire, yeah. dude. Dude, my crispy Colorados are on my feet. Every day, yeah. Mine, I, I have the Thors, and I'm getting just, a pair of those. They're awesome. I love. I absolutely. I want to get a pair of Nevadas too because I want a full leather boot. But yeah, well, I hunted mostly in my crispies down there. I did put on hip boots a couple times. Yeah, well, but I didn't like when we them. recovered your your stag because we didn't know where it went. Yeah, and if I had hip boots on, I probably would have put those on. Yeah, but that water was like up to our calf. So yeah, you know, it was, it was fun. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. It was that was that was a blast of a hunt. I wouldn't have been able to get away with those uh, Colorados in that water, but I'm thinking about getting a higher leather boot that's waterproof. So I got a pair of the Kenetrex. So mm-hmm. when I was yeah, in Ohio great. last year, I was like, th- that was probably the last time I hunted with rubber boots, mm-hmm. and I was like, f this. These yeah. <laughs> hiking these hills in rubber boots where my feet are slipping around. Not fun. No, and I don't care how good they are. They just, they're not breathable. Yeah. With neoprene, neoprene is not breathable. It right. sucks. It sucks. And it totally was, sucks. It's just soup in there, and it was just disgusting. And Your up. socks smell fantastic at the end of a full awesome. day hunt. You know what also smelled awesome at the end of a full day hunt? Our cabin. Because oh. the cabin that you and I were in. We had nine people in camp. It was not designed for nine people. Know, nine well, dudes. Well, first off. I'm sleeping. I'm the second biggest guy in camp. I'm sleeping on the bunk that is this far from the ceiling, and is this high up in the air. And I get there after our bottle of brown that night, and I like, couldn't get in the bunk. Where's the ladder? <laughs> the ladder. And you're like, climb on up. You're, you're like, s- can you please help me? <laughs> I said, absolutely not. No, I wanted to enjoy the show. Yeah, you were like, kind of funny, wait, comical, getting up in there. I'm like, oh, wait till this thing comes falling down like That's Tommy Boy. Exactly what I'm thinking. It's like Step Brothers Redux. Yeah. I'm thinking you're getting up there, and this thing is collapsing on my face. I'm getting a two by four with about 240 pounds of weight behind it. Right in my neck. Oh, God, that would be great. No. no said, my futon would have cried. I was sleeping like this. <laughs> Woke up with a mouthful of bourbon. I'm like, mm, oh, no. But then I couldn't get down. There's no ladder. And now I'm sober enough to not just, like, roll out of bed. And uh, there's no way that I'm just, like, dangling down eight feet to I'm so glad you didn't get just my foot vomit off the, the bed and just pour it down on Spoonie and I. I should have. Oh. But then... <clears throat> The um, the night that it rained. Oh, I went out and hunted. Yeah, you hunted in the rain, and I could not believe. Greg and I sat in that ground light. It was pouring rain. Yeah, and, wind was blowing hard. And the wind was howling, and uh, you hung up all your stuff in the room, and did it smell like Terrible. the marsh? Bro, when I got home, I put all my stuff in a, that black container. Shout out Big Country because that was that was a good container. I used one just like that, and it sealed in the funk. Mm. When I got home, I cracked it open, and it was still in the suburban. And I shut it real quick. I'm like, <laughs> "Oh no, oh no! That that that's that's death." Yeah. I washed it outside with pet odor eliminator, like three or four times. Rinsed it three or four times and hung it up in trees in my. And then I was, I walked up to it when I was finished with it and I smelled it and I was like, thank God that shit worked. Thank God it worked. Cause it smelled so awful. It's like I mean, we were like four, no, it was just funk. Yeah. I mean, I, well, I fell in the water once <laughs> I fell in and got methane water all over me. <laughs> and then after, after Jared shot his stag, oh, yeah, he did his interview, him. I tackled him and 
oh, that was real smart. <laughs> I just fell in the water and, oh, yeah, fell in the water. I didn't tell you also. I remember, I remember watching you do that and I was like, mm. I was like, Billy's got to drive us back. <laughs> yeah. So I'm glad you said that because when I got back at three o'clock in the morning, I went in. First thing I did was kiss my wife and hug her. Yeah. I took a shower and it was just, just muck coming off of me. It was horrible. And I woke up the next morning, took my kids to school. And when I went out to the suburban, I looked, I'm like, oh, I hope I have leather cleaner because where I fell down in the marsh that we're going to put in air quotes mud that I fell in <laughs> was all over my ass. So it was smeared all over my seats. And I drove like fucking four hours in that. Yeah. Oh, thank God that came out pretty quickly. That's gross. Uh, it was foul. Dude. <laughs> I, I called the dude who detailed it three days before that. I called him and I said, come back. We're gonna He's need, there right now. We're gonna need a redo. Recleaning it. He was like, "Bro, I just did it." People, most people do this six, you know, once every six months. I was like, "You don't know me." Yeah, you don't know me. I can dirty or break anything. Yeah, lose or break it. <laughs> That's my nickname. <laughs> yeah, break it or lose it. So. Yeah, but that that was um, I don't know. For me, that was probably like the most fun hunting camp experience I've, I've had. They had a blast. Yeah. I mean, even to some of the interns, and they were cool. All of them were, they were cool dudes. We had fun. But the one guy, Spoonie, was like, man, you guys are, you guys really know how to have fun. I was like, don't follow in our example. <laughs> I don't follow in our footsteps at all. You don't know? do this. Don't do what I do. <laughs> no, we had a blast, man. And, and now we're back in the burbs, but I'm probably going to hunt in the morning, and then I'm taking my kids back down to camp and we're going to see if I can put at least a couple of them on, on deer. Well, your dad shot one this morning. Dad shot a stag this morning. So they were, he saw three stags fighting in the marsh. That's so cool. And then a bunch of stags. And it was just, it was, it was a good, it was a good day. It's the rut though. I mean, what yeah. do you expect? It, it is the rut of any animal. It's going to be more fun. And what's cool about that is it's right before the whitetail hunt. It's like oh, the yeah. perfect timing in the like October lull to, to be able to be like, yeah, let's go over to Maryland. Yeah, exactly exactly right right when that everyone says that october lull when the the bucks are kind of you know they're not on their feet yet yeah. really in, in light that's when the stags are running around. and it's a great time to like let your properties rest because mm -hmm. season starts we're like pounding oaks we're shooting a lot of deer we're putting a lot of traffic on our properties we can kind of pull back go over there hunt watch our cell cameras mm -hmm. and come back one thing i've decided that i have to do now this is the fifth or sixth hunt i've gone on where i get into camp and i have zero cell phone service right i'm getting a new cell phone uh i'm getting a, a, a hunting yeah. phone yep that is going so i have Verizon. it's a different right service right yeah so i'm gonna get one that's a mvno which are a lot of these like lower rung phone plans are they have multiple carriers so they have agreements to use all these other carriers towers and they just pick the service that's strongest. So, like, Straight Talk Wireless is is the one that I did a bunch of research on. It is dirt cheap. You can get an unlimited plan, no contract, 50 bucks a month. Just turn it on, turn it off as you want. Fire. So I mean, you have to buy a phone. I should get, like, 10 of those for camp. You should. Seriously. And then anyone who comes down and hunts has a cell phone they can use while we're there. Because there was no service. Yeah. Like, your wife was hitting me up on getting in my DMs going, Again. where is my husband I think and i was like in your am i supposed to say i'm the husband right now <laughs> are we role playing right now <laughs> no and she's she wasn't really that bad she was just like are you guys coming home it's like nine o'clock on a saturday she's and like, i think you, it'd be a bad idea for you, you guys dead? to come home is he has he drowned in the marsh because if he has please send me a picture i'm sending in for insurance money uh, i've already put the claim in yeah i just <laughs> need his death certificate please <laughs> <laughs> make it look like an accident <laughs> shoot him in the back of the head billy i don't care <laughs> you know just finish we can finally be together <laughs> no, but she definitely she wouldn't want you either <laughs> no hell no i'd be worse <laughs> i'd be worse uh, she may want nick yates you know guy just knows how to take it pegasus never goes out hunting no do he doesn't <laughs> hunt you know he spends his money in other ways though yeah. i love that guy shout out nick yates he's 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 the main man anyway but look we had an awesome week mm -hmm. super cool and i'm about i'm literally going back 
<laughs> in a couple of days. It was just so much fun. But we're gearing up right now for the right tail, white tail pre rut. I mean, cameras are fired up right now. We moved them to scrapes. We moved them to rub lines, <laughs> which are pretty much in the same areas. I but. have twenty more cell cameras that just came in that need to be deployed. Let's go put them out. So. In fact, we can put them out. We're going to hunt this evening, so um, let's go. Let's at least put a couple out because the property we're hunting tonight, we've never actually hunted on it. Yep. So, so. it should be good. And then uh, you just picked up a new property or two that mm -hmm. need a couple cameras. Um, and we need to go over to some other Maryland properties, put them out. So kind of we like to cast as wide of a net as possible. Um, yeah, until gonna, we find something like special that we can hone in on. Yeah, and um, you know we're going to do a video kind of about how to pick where to put those cameras and what to look for. So uh, check that on on the tube of you. Um, you got anything else to add? No, I just had a fun. I mean, just to add that we had a blast this week. You know, this I, it was fun. I, I you and I tend to like we can get each other going laughing wise. <laughs> I could not tell you the last time that I laughed until I cried. We were peeing ourselves. Sober. 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 No, no. no we were nothing. sober, laughing our brains out. <laughs> Most notably, the story of my buddy who he and his wife, they're both Greek. They have a very <laughs> violent, vocal, like a verbally violent relationship. Not in a spiteful, it's, they're like Italian people. They're just like very. You They're know, emotional. Animated, mm -hmm. very emotional. They scream at each other a lot. But these <laughs> two, I mean, cuss at each other. Oh, bad. Mm -hmm. But our buddy, our other buddy was going over to this guy's house to pick up tree stands and just being able to tell this story to everybody in camp. I don't know why. It just, I think it's really funny. But for some reason, it just was extra funny to me. <laughs> but his wife screaming at him, he turns the scream back out of his wood shop Puts his thumb on his saw and it goes bink. Cuts his thumb off on, on a table saw. On a table saw, <laughs> and she's screaming at him like, "You dumb mother!" Yeah, yeah. He's like, "You man, you just made me cut my thumb off." <laughs> and our buddy is there, like, right <laughs> when this happens, and he's like, "What? What is going on?" Like, I can come back. He's like, "No, you gotta find my thumb. My thumb's in that pile over there." He said it's in a pile of tree stands. Tree stands. He had a bunch of tree stands, and he had to go dig he, through these. Tree he came stands. over to buy to pick up some tree stands, yes. and they're screaming at each other, fighting, and he's like, "F you, I'm." Doing my woodworking <laughs> down here. And she says something back, and he turns just to say, fuck you. And cut, boom, there goes his thumb against the wall. Yeah, and he's yelling at her, you made me cut my thumb off. <laughs> <laughs> you hide you. She's like, you dumb son of a bitch. It's you, not my fault. You cut yes, your it thumb off. Yeah, and that just is hilarious. And it's fun. And the best thing, what made me laugh until I cried, was that he turned to our buddy after he told him to find his thumb in the tree stands he said i just bought a new thumb release <laughs> <laughs> i just switched to a thumb release he's like dude why don't you find your thumb man <laughs> did, did he get it reattached he got it attached it's working does it fine. work yeah I think oh this, my god I, I don't know if he can bend it but it definitely i don't know if he can bend it that means it doesn't work <laughs> I mean, sure. I mean, it's alive sure. but doesn't work. Yeah. I don't know if I want it. Uh, it's all black. It looks like <laughs> <Frankenstein. laughs> it smells kind of funky, but I'm very. It smelled like my clothes after last week. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Except you didn't get to wash it off. Oh, jeez. <laughs> but yeah, that that story to me is just one of the funniest things ever. And being able to that made me laugh until I cried. We were telling stories like that the entire time, and it was just some we can't share because they were just re like ridiculous yeah none of them none of them like that one you couldn't you couldn't share the full story because there were some choice words in it that i don't know if i'd repeat to my mammy definitely not allowed to no repeat. we had a blast though man we freaking laughed so hard so many times i was thinking there's never there's no way any deer are coming within 300 yards of camp <laughs> and they probably they were bugling right outside the window right yeah at night you could hear them yeah that was that was awesome when when people in our bunk weren't snoring bro i definitely was a couple of us were there were a couple cpap machines going around we were sharing <laughs> apparently i need a cpap machine after <laughs> how it sounds like i was snoring like <laughs> uh, no. all right well thank you guys for uh for listening watching 
stay tuned. We got plenty more stuff. If there's any other stuff that you want covered, let us know. Maybe we'll cover it. Maybe we won't. Yeah, I don't know. I might just ignore you. No, but this is the hanging, <laughs> <laughs> this is the hanging hunt, hanging hunt podcast. Yeah, I mean, if you want to come over and have a beer and let us ridicule you, we will on camera. It'll be a blast. That'd be great. That'd be like one of those. Uh, what's that Reddit thing or the the Reddit? Threads? It's like roast me. Yeah, mm-hmm. we could do live roast me. <laughs> those are brutal. Yeah, those might just be like private. <laughs> they might have to go on some. I don't mind private. <laughs> All right, guys. I've been shot. I've been stabbed. I've had somebody try to cut my insides out. But nothing hurts worse than them <laughs> damn kidney stones. <laughs> By the way, I got to. Did you talk to him today about what happened? Yes. Oh my gosh! About the guy moaning. Yeah. While he was on the tree stand. Yeah. yeah. We're gonna. We'll. We'll hit that up on the next podcast. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you guys for watching, listening, whatevering. We'll see you soon. Thanks. Yeah, dude. He was Bro. like. I just I got down with my crossbow. And I took I took the safety off. Did he tell you I just took the